Section 21 of Wessex Poems by Thomas Hardy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone. The Peasant's Confession. Si le maréchal Grouchy avait été rejoint par l'officier que Napoléon lui avait expédié la veille à dix heures du soir, toute question eût disparu. Mais cet officier n'était pas point parvenu à sa destination, ainsi que le maréchal n'a cesse de l'affirmer toute sa vie, et il faut l'en croire, car autrement il n'aurait eu aucune raison pour hésiter. Cet officier avait-il été pris Avait-il passé à l'ennemi C'est ce qu'on a toujours ignoré. Thiers Histoire de l'Empire Waterloo Good father, t'was an evening in middle June, and war was waged anew by great Napoleon, who for years had strewn men's bones all Europe through. Three nights ere this, with columned corps, he crossed the Sambre at Charleroi, to move on Brussels, where the English host dallied at Parc and Bois. The yestertide we'd heard the gloomy gun growl through the long sun day, from Quatre Bras and Nigny, till the dun twilight suppressed the fray. Albeit therein, as lated tongues bespoke, Brunswick's high heart was drained, and Prussia's line and landwehr, though unbroke, stood cornered and constrained. And at next noontime Grouchy slowly passed with thirty thousand men. We'd hoped thenceforth no army, small or vast, would trouble us again. My hut lay deeply in a vale recessed, and never a soul seems nigh. When reassured at length, we went to rest, my children, wife, and I. But what was this that broke our humble ease? What noise above the rain, above the dripping of the poplar trees that smote along the pane? A call of mastery, bidding me arise, compelled me to the door, at which a horseman stood in martial guise, splashed, sweating from every pore. Had I seen Grouchy? Yes. Which track took he? Could I lead thither on? Fulfillment would ensure gold pieces three, perchance more gifts anon. I bear the emperor's mandate, then he said, charging the marshal straight to strike between the double host ahead ere they cooperate. Engaging Blouchet till the emperor put Lord Wellington to flight, and next the Prussians, this to set afoot is my emprise tonight. I joined him in the mist, but pausing, sought to estimate his say. Grouchy had made for Wavre, and yet, on thought, I did not lead that way. I mused, if Grouchy thus instructed be, the clash comes sheer hereon. My farm is stripped, while, as for pieces three, money the French have none. Grouchy unwarned, moreover, the English win and mine is left to me, they buy, not borrow. Hence did I begin to lead him treacherously. By joie d'ogne, near to east, as we on drew, dawn pierced the humid air, and east I faced with him, though I knew never marched Grouchy there. Near Otigny we passed, across the dial, Limlet left far aside, and thence direct, toward Pervey and Noville, through the green grain, till he cried, I doubt thy conduct, man, no track is here, I doubt thy gauged word. Thereat he scowled on me, and pranced me near, and pricked me with his sword. Nay, captain, hold, we skirt, not trace the course of Grouchy, said I then. As we go, yonder went he, with his force of thirty thousand men, at length noon nighed, when west from St. John's Mound a horse artillery boomed, and from St. Lambert's uplands chapel crowned the Prussian squadrons loomed. Then to the wayless wet grey ground he leapt. My mission fails, he cried. Too late for Grouchy now to intercept, for peasant you have lied. He turned to pistol me. I sprang and drew the sabre from his flank and twixt his nape and shoulder, ere he knew, I struck, and dead he sank. 
I hid him deep in nodding rye and oat, his shroud green stalks and loam, his requiem the corn blade's husky note, and then I hastened home. Two armies writhe in coils of red and blue, and brass and iron clang, from Goumont past the front of Waterloo, to Paplotte and Smoin. The guard imperial wavered on the height, the emperor's face grew glum. I sent, he said, to Grouchy yesternight, and yet he does not come. T'was then, good father, that the French espied, streaking the summer land, the men of Blouchet, but the emperor cried, Grouchy is now at hand. And meanwhile, Vandler, Vivienne, Maitland, Kempt, Metterlon, Frien, Ney, but Grouchy, missent, blamed, yet blame exempt, Grouchy was far away. By even slain or struck, Michel the Strong, Bold Travers, Dinop, De Lord, Smart Guyot, Réalleux, Lérité, Frion, scattered that campaign o'er. Fallen likewise wronged Duhaime, and skilled Lobau, did that red sunset see, Colbert, Le Gros, Blancard, and of the foe, Picton and Ponsonby. With Gordon, Canning, Blackman, Amptida, L'Etrange, Delancy, Pacte, Cross, Dully, Stable, Maurice, Howard, Hay, Von Schweren, Watzdorf, Boeck, Smith, Phillips, Fuller, Lint, and Battersby, and hosts of ranksmen round, memorials linger yet to speak of thee, of those that bit the ground. The guard's last column yielded, Dikes of dead lay between vale and ridge, as thinned yet closing, faint yet fierce, they sped in packs to Genap Bridge. Safe was my stock, my capel cow and slain, intact each cock and hen, but Grouchy, far at Wavre, all day had lain, and thirty thousand men. O oh, saints! Had I but lost my earing corn, and saved the cause once prized, O oh, saints, why such false witness had I borne, when late I'd sympathized? So now, being old, my children I askance my slowly dwindling store, and crave my might, till worn with tarriance I care for life no more. To Almighty God henceforth I stand confessed, and Virgin Saint Marie, O Michael, John, and holy ones in rest, entreat the Lord for me. End of section 21